I would like today to address three challenges that I see for higher education. The complexity challenge, the decolonization challenge, and the inequality challenge. Needless to say that we are living times of deep interconnected nested crises. So when we speak about crises, uh, we hear the climate emergency, the extinction threat, global health, and the queen of all the crises, uh, the crisis of inequalities. And however, you know, truth be told, uh, climate, extinction, global health are symptoms of a more profound systemic civilizational crisis that can, uh, in my opinion, be depicted as a profound fracture of the relationship between humans, the economy, nature, and politics. I, I strongly believe that higher education, and education more widely, as Federico was saying at the beginning, should be geared towards healing this fracture, reconnecting the greed of life, reconciling, making peace with nature in these times of barbarity, these times of uncertainty and, and fear. And let me start now with, with the, the complexity challenge. Our world is increasingly complex. Crises are interconnected. And therefore, responses should also reflect this complexity and use a holistic lens. We, we need absolutely to enrich our epistemologies, shape a, a true intercultural, cross-disciplinary higher education. In, in short, in few words, we need an effort of translation, as Irina was saying, uh, we need to resignify the world. We need new categories to explain, uh, to better understand the world so we can be and act uh, in a less, I would, I would say, destructive and selfish way as humans. So we, we are uh, witnessing an increasing trend of highly specialized higher education, a zoom in like education. And I also believe that we need a panoramic lens first to understand and capture the landscape, the context. Uh, science and technology, for example, cannot be understood or exercised if we don't understand society and the social scaffold in which they are embedded and the people they should serve. Ethics in science is critical to ensure that scientific knowledge and new technologies do not counter human rights and nature's rights for that matter. Higher education for the 21st century should in few words and, and thinking about the great uh, Edgar Morin's um, seven complex lessons in education for the future where he clearly calls for blurring boundaries between disciplines in contemporary knowledge. And also he calls for the urgent need for an education that reflects the complexity and interconnectedness of our world and the challenges that we face collectively as humankind. Um, so a new higher education paradigm should allow for true intergenerational, intercultural co-creation of new societal designs. And, and this should be the basis for a new social contract that has become now a mantra. Everybody speaks about the need for a new social contract. And, and this is much needed as uh, we reinvent ourselves during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. And this of course requires that uh, we are equipped uh, with a different mindset we cannot continue to operate under a linear fragmentary logic uh, with a Cartesian thinking. We rather need a systems thinking based on complexity to better capture the variable geometry that we live in. So my second point is the decolonization challenge. And this is deeply connected with the complexity challenge. If we are to enrich our comprehension and knowledge toolbox, it is imperative that we work in a cross-disciplinary, but also a cross-cultural form of higher education. The authority, 
the hierarchy, the legitimacy of one school of thought, of Western epistemologies, of methodological monism, uh, considered uh, to be are you know considered to be above uh, or more uh, having more authority uh, than other equally sophisticated, equally valid epistemologies and worldviews. And this idea, I think, should be challenged in the new uh, high uh, higher education that we want to build and shape. And this is, of course, uh, this idea of decolonizing education is not a, a very original argument, I have to say. Edouard Said, Orientalism, Homi Baba, and so many others uh, in post-colonial theory have profusely explained this issue. And here I would like to briefly uh, quote uh, Sharon Stein when she writes that decolonization is not a single event or prescribed blueprint but a complex contested process of unlearning and undoing centuries of colonial ideas, desires, and infrastructures. And of course, these are complex processes. There are, there are no magical solutions. And at the end of the day, bringing cultural diversity as a scaffold for a richer, higher education will require addressing and unpacking the vestiges of colonialism and neocolonial manifestations. So um, in other words, uh, uh, diverse epistemologies, eclectic approaches to knowledge are central to tackle the complexity of our times. And I am convinced that it is possible. Having spent several years working with indigenous peoples of my country, Ecuador, I can say that often I learn more working and living with them than during my many years, my many years in academia. So quality intercultural education, higher education is possible. Cross-cultural education is central to be the sense of shared destiny, uh, to care for our earth system, which is our common heritage. And for that, we need a shared consciousness uh, as well. And uh, here, my last, uh, my last challenge, which is the inequalities challenge. And, and I think the, the paper for the conference is so clear about this issue. The question is very simple. It's an arithmetic issue that has ethical, political, and policy implications. Uh, the message, as I said, I said, is so clear. Uh, it means that transactional inequalities in society uh, by income, class, gender, ethnicity are mirrored in the coverage and quality of, uh, in higher education. And these inequalities uh, increased and boosted by the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis are going to make uh, things a little more difficult. If you take women, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, they are among the most affected by these in, in, in inequalities. And um, we know that there is a growing demand for higher education and yet, there is not enough investment infrastructure for teachers uh, to uh, face the increasing demand. And the bad news are that in current uh, fiscal crisis in developing countries will of course have an impact in public investment in higher education. So we are already witnessing alarming trends in many countries, especially in the global South. So in, in the paradox here, uh, friends, is that we know that access to higher education or rather to education at large is one of the greater social equalizers. And this means that if we are to rethink higher education globally, we also need to rethink about the redistribution of funding infrastructure, digital resources, and of course, we need to rethink the issue of pertinence and quality. But this rethinking, uh, this much needed transformation cannot happen in isolation as uh, one of experiment of, of, uh, from a community or even a country. It has to be a global, well-orchestrated effort following on uh, the amazing efforts of UNESCO. Um, and here we have among us two former director general, uh, generals of, of UNESCO. And, and I think this is precisely what gathers us in this conference, thinking collectively about a much needed transformation of higher education. 
And these three challenges that I, I just outlined have profound impacts in the way we shape and organize global governance structures, how we equip multilateral institutions that are human-made, human-led, with the persons, the humans, the professionals that are needed to make these institutions fit for purpose. And fit for purpose mean ready to deal with complexity, volatility, and unpredictability. And therefore, this conference, I, I, I would say, is of paramount importance. It speaks to the need of a new global choreography for a rejuvenated, inclusive, human, complex higher education based on the very principles that guided the creation of the international organizations. So uh, we need to go back to the basics. Uh, to the principles that created our multilateral institutions, including the United Nations. Solidarity, cooperation, dialogue. Uh, we need a renovated global governance systems, uh, system for the Anthropocene. That is the collective task that we have ahead of us. This also means that efforts for a global retooling of higher education should be based on a sort of new literacy for a value-based multilateral system. Uh, a new paradigm in higher education should therefore, um, you know, have, a, we, we prepare, you know, good doctors, good engineers, nurses, artists, writers, astronauts, uh, but they also have to be at the same time, global citizens, critical thinkers with specific uh, skills, of course, but with a sense of belonging to a broader community, to an earth system. And let me close uh, with a quote again by the great Edgar Morin, um, when he said, today, the fundamental global objective of all education, aspiring not only to progress, but to the survival of humanity, is to civilize and unify the earth and transform the human species into genuine humanity. The education of the future should teach an ethics of planetary understanding.